Welcome everybody, we are on site at Founder World in San Francisco. I'm joined in the studio today by Chris Gill, co-founder of Clover Health. Chris, thank you for joining me. Hi, yeah, thanks for having me. So we were talking just before kind of cameras started rolling about the really cool stuff that you're doing in the healthcare space. Can you kind of elaborate what Clover Health is and, and sort of the innovations that you're bringing to the market? Yeah, absolutely. So Clover Health is a health insurance startup, uh, but what we're doing is using data about our members to figure out the specific moments in time where we have an opportunity to intervene in their care and actually prevent them from having adverse health consequences down the road. So for things like if, if we have a member who's managing a chronic disease, say congestive heart failure, we're looking for opportunities for specific care follow-ups or tests or, or um, interventions with the member that we know will reduce their probability of having uh, all the adverse health consequences that are associated with that disease. So for the developers who are watching, how does that work? Like, how do you do that? Yeah, so we take all these raw data points. We're an insurance company, so we can see historical claims. Claims have diagnoses associated with them, treatments and procedures, and they're all encoded as numbers. So then we have to match those up through uh, concept ontologies to be able to say, this person took this drug, we know this to be an oral diabetes medication. Or they had this test, and we know that it's an indication of how well they've controlled their blood sugar up to this point. And then we can say, okay, well now we can assemble a clinical profile of the person who has all those raw data points associated with them. So we know this is, for example, a high risk type two diabetic. And we know the appropriate clinical standards for managing that disease. And we can see the care they're actually receiving from their doctors, hospitals, specialists. And we can identify the missing pieces and then go out with our own staff of nurse practitioners. And while they're in that encounter with that member, they're using applications that we've written to say, while you're, while you're interacting with this member, make sure you do this one thing, because we know that, uh, we know the quantitative effect on their health probabilities uh, for you filling this care gap at this moment in time. Wow. So that obviously has a lot of upside for the individual, um, but also seems to have a lot of upside for the insurance company as well. Yeah, exactly, and that's why we, we chose to do this as a health insurance company because we're on the hook for paying for really expensive hospitalizations if they happen. So our financial incentives are aligned with the health incentives of our members. And as we're improving their quality of life, we're actually saving costs for ourselves. So we think it's like a really uh, well aligned way of, of managing health. Interesting. How new is this in the space? Do so you guys see that you guys are the only people doing this? Are there people now following along? Like what's, what's the space look like? The space is largely people who are trying to do pieces of this. Um, I think we're sort of best positioned to do this comprehensively because we are an insurance company who also has this data science and software development function. I think a lot of people are building similar tools to the ones we've built and they're trying to sell them into insurance companies, but it sits alongside six or seven other IT tools they're using. It's not sharing data among those things and they're missing these opportunities then to actually drive operational behavior changes because all they can do is sell software. We think we're, we're doing it all together in one roof, and we think that's the novel part. Okay, very cool. And so an insurance company with a very cool holistic tech uh, bend to it, what draws you to a place like Founder World? I think what's, what's interesting about events like this is seeing all of the other things that are starting to happen in the space and, and potentially find um, other health tech startups that are doing things that will produce uh, improved disease outcomes uh, and then looking at Clover as potentially a platform to go out and, and be a customer for those things. Because we'll invest in any technology that we can show improves the, the clinical quality outcomes of our members. So we think we're the ideal customer for a lot of the people who might be exhibiting at an event like this. And so you were, you were a speaker today. What was it you were talking about? What was the message you were trying to get across to everybody else? Yeah, largely it was this. It was, it was about the state of the healthcare vertical and what entrepreneurs and people looking to get into this space uh, should know about uh, who buys what, what are their incentives, uh, what, are, what are the changing regulatory dynamics of healthcare. And so as you look at, uh, obviously we talked about you investing in anything that makes sense, right, for, for the incentives. Um, is there any one space in, from a healthcare point of view that looks particularly promising? Is it, is it VR, is it big data, is it uh, anything like that? that yeah, for me, I think it's, it's a lot of stuff related to behavioral health. So we're insuring a, a population of seniors, 65 and older, who might be on a lot of medications simultaneously. And it's very, it's very difficult if you're also managing maybe depression 
or, or other, other uh, behavioral health issues to stay adherent to your medication schedule. So a lot of people are coming up with different tools where um, maybe it's a smartphone app or smart pill bottle or things that help people to take their medication on a more regular schedule. We know that improves health outcomes. So we're looking at potentially being a, a customer for those sorts of things because we can measure whether it's actually working for our members and continue to deploy the, the technology that actually helps. That's really cool too because you could actually prove out the model for the startups as well. Yeah, you have absolutely. The system. Awesome. So t speaking of technology, do you have a favorite Google technology? Yeah, so I'm, I've been using Inbox lately. Uh, yes, no, I'm a huge fan of Inbox. It uh, just within the last couple months rolled out uh, for our enterprise account. Uh, so I'm, I, I love it. So yeah, do you find the paradigm shift hard to, uh, hard to get used to or are you just easy to pick up? I think it took a couple weeks for me to get to Inbox Zero. And, and start to use that, but being able to defer something and say, I'll get to this tomorrow morning and clear it out of my inbox and just always be like managing the things that come through. One of the things I find is that my job as a, as a co-founder in this business is to really be up on top of things and make sure I'm not blocking anyone in the organization that's waiting on me for an answer. So being able to have that sort of like uh, optimization for cycle time that I think Inbox is a really good job of for me. Yeah, I know, I'm kind of cheating right now. I have both Inbox and Gmail. Okay. And so I've kind of got one foot in both camps and I, that doesn't work well all the way around. But. I went completely over to Inbox. Yeah. Like the second I, I used it, I was 100% in. It inspired me. You're going to have to do it. Well, thank you very much for joining. Yeah, thanks for having awesome. me. Awesome. And thank you guys for joining. This is Onsite at Founder World in San Francisco.